So uh, what do you have, because I'm sure a lot of people ask this, do you have a favorite one, a favorite cartoon? Uh, oh, it, of, of the cartoons that we did, yes. Uh, and it's one that nobody sees, but uh, uh, it's called It's a Nightmare, Charlie Brown. Everyone's going to need to see that because that's everybody's yeah. favorite. All the animators keep saying that. I'm, I was going to watch it this well, morning. But the, the, uh, well, the thing about it is, is that Snoopy uh, eats too much. He, he, he has a big pizza. He goes to bed and starts and has his nightmare. And where, and the problem, I think the reason people don't like it is because Snoopy becomes a real dog. Mm -hmm. you know, in order to protect himself in this nightmare, he has to become a real dog. So he sheds his persona and becomes uh, this dog. And it's so out of character, but it's great, fun animation. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, uh, it just worked really well as a, as a story, I think. And that's why it's your favorite? Yeah, because yeah. of being such well, a strong story? Well, it's good fun to do. I do love Race for Your Life. Uh, the Halloween special, I think. I mean, you know, I think the ones for me that are the most fun are the ones that have a little bit more philosophy or, you know... It, well, it's, yeah, uh, it, but it was... What we were doing when we made uh, uh, the Charlie Brown films, you know, and uh, in this country, they they were never for kids. They were always for adults. And they're aimed at adults, and so they have adult themes and adult stories. And, of course, you have these little kids speaking, you know, adult language and trying to get their tongues around complicated words. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and you know, we couldn't compromise on that. You know, Schultz wrote a word down, we had to use it. And we couldn't change it, so the kids would completely maul it. You know, they'd destroy it, but it didn't <laughs> matter. You know, it was just part of the charm of it. And, uh, you know, and also, see, in, like in Europe, the films run you know, uh, at children's time, you know, like before five o'clock or at five o'clock in the afternoon. Uh -huh. And uh, here they always ran after eight o'clock. So they were adult you know, cartoons, you know, not children's programs. And I a saw lot of people a lot forget of them. that. I saw a lot of them in French mm. and in Italian. And, it, you know, they, they work perfectly well mm. in any language. Sometimes you lose little something in some cartoons, but in those, I think they're so universal. Well, yeah, and, and I think it's also because of that, but I know in, because uh, uh, I used to do commercials in Europe uh, with the characters all the time, and uh, the uh, advertisers always wanted to use adult voices. I said, no, so it won't work if you do that, because of that mispronunciation. And, uh, you know, it was uh, difficult convincing them. They would do it eventually. And, uh, I had this problem in Spain. I was doing a whole series of them in Barcelona. And the client finally said to me, because you, know, you had kids who couldn't read. So I would read the line to them, and then they would repeat it. Mm -hmm. And finally the client said, look, we're not making commercials for Mexico. We're making them for Spain. You know? And, of course, I had no idea. They were, they were making my Mexican accent. Right, from being so here. So the client had to go in and do it. He had to direct the kids. <laughs> So they could pronounce it properly, but you know, because I just you know, I was looking at, well, hang on, you guys mispronounce your own language. <laughs> so, but, so uh, it, 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 it's just you know, funny, but in a lot of the languages, and we did a lot in Italy also, a lot of stuff mm -hmm. there, Spain, Italy, Portugal, Germany, uh, but you know, we used to, even in Sweden, we use kids all the time. So uh, working with your dad, what was it like? Um, being in business with your dad. Not so much your dad in particular, but you know, what was that like being the son of someone who had... Well, it's always difficult because uh, uh, your parents are always hypercritical of you, or they're more critical of you than they are everybody else, so you feel being, you're being picked on sometimes. But you're not, they're just, uh, they just expect them from you. Right. Uh, that's the, but uh, my dad solved all of that problem by packing me off to Europe. And sending you to put, put eight thousand miles between us, and then we couldn't argue about anything, so it worked fine. And, and at that point, you'd learned everything you were going to learn from him. Oh no, and no, but uh, you never stop learning. You know, uh, you know, every every time you do a film, there's a, a new problem that comes up or arises that you have to solve. Right. And uh, so it's uh, you know, it's always a learning to you, know, you just from the, the the first film to the last film we did. Uh, you can see how the characters change because Schultz altered the way he uh, drew them. And uh, and, and also, um, the, 
you know, we learned how to move them better you know, over the years mm -hmm. and uh, how to make them you know, more convincing. But they do change a lot. And if you look at the Charlie Brown Christmas, you look at the way those characters are drawn, and you look at one of the more recent ones, and they look totally different characters. Right. Uh, what do you think, um, in terms of the characters, um, I mean, because you have kids, mm -hmm. so they watch the cartoons. Uh, well, yeah, my uh, older kids do, but uh, uh, my younger ones, who are English, uh, they, they had them on, on at strange times, and so they, they would watch it if they came into the office, my studio. Uh -huh. you know, sometimes I just put a, a film on for it. And uh, if I was talking to my, one of my, uh, my, my youngest daughter the other day, and she hadn't seen half of these films. She said, where did these come from? Because you know? I, I, I moved my office, and I said, I brought all these DVDs home of all these films. Mm -hmm. and they were sitting there, and she'd never seen them. I had no idea. Of course, a lot of them hadn't been broadcast in uh, Europe. Right. What, uh, as a director now, what do you think uh, you learned? What do you think was the best lesson from working on Peanuts for so long? What can you learn from? Well, it's what what we learned, or what I learned anyway, was that uh, you know, number one is a bit of humility because they're not my characters. You know, uh, they're Schultz's characters. You had to be true to what he was doing, mm -hmm. and, uh, and you know, even if you didn't like what he'd written, you had no choice. You, that's what you were making, and uh, so, and animators do this anyway. You get used to doing you know every film the, the characters are different, and you know, in between the uh, half hours we were doing, we were doing you know, all kinds of commercials and all different styles, and different languages and whatnot. And, me particularly, because I was doing a lot of film in uh, Europe, and so I did films in like you know, ten different languages, and different characters, different styles, and uh, they all demand a, a, you know, a different approach. And so you, you kind of you're constantly reinventing yourself in order to do something. Mm -hmm. So you become a different actor every the time. So that's what the animator is. He's an actor, or she, and uh, so. Uh, they have to become that character for whatever it is, you know, a day while they're animating it. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they go off and become somebody else. So we, we're, we're a bunch of schizophrenics, I guess. So you inhabit, you think animators inhabit the characters they draw? You have to, because you have to understand the character, and then you, you have to act the way that character acts. Not the way you would, the way that character acts. In that case, you better pick only Snoopy yeah. and Linus, because <laughs> those are the ones that are... You know, have their stuff. Well, Marcy's good. Well, no, they're, 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 they're all they're, great in the different ways. They're all good in their way. Right. But and uh, they're all different. They represent so many things. You have to remember, most comic strips only have two or three characters in them. He's got dozens, mm -hmm. and you know, some of them appear now and then, and then disappear for years. Right. And never come back. And you know, what happened to them? But uh, so, and you. Know, some of them, like, was it Shermie, I think, is uh, oh, a yeah. character? He's uh -huh. disappeared. Don't know what happened to him. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and Franklin was hardly in any of them. But, you know, and uh, so a lot of them, you know, they were, you saw them more in our films than you ever did in the strip. Right. And people don't know that because they, they just remember that and they'll look at the strip and they just, you know, uh, drop these characters in. You know, which is great. I mean, just uh, the success of that, the, the shows, is that uh, it made people familiar with all of those characters. Mm -hmm. And so I bet you, you know, most people, when they read the strip now, they put whatever voice they knew when they first saw the films, you know, on Charlie Brown or Lucy or Linus, whoever. Yep. And uh, they put that voice there when they're reading the strip. And that is really the sign of a good partnership in terms of interpreting Schultz's mm. original comic strip into animation. Yeah. And I think, yeah, well, it, it, it's, you know, uh, what it was is uh, that it's that partnership between, you know, Sparky, Bill, and Lee Mendelssohn, uh -huh. you know, and, uh, you know, because they were, they're all friends, so they were, they're all good friends, and they knew each other, and like uh, a lot of friends, you know, they, they, they just knew how to, how to communicate with each other. So, You'd sit. In fact, I have recordings of Bill talking to uh, Sparky about films, and 
neither of them ever finished a sentence. You know, like old married couples. You know, the, you've got these three guys talking, starting a sentence, and then the other one would finish it in their mind, and so halfway through would interrupt. It was like, I know what you mean, and that was it. So uh, they're just very funny. So it's like old married couples. You know. And that's Nobody what made great. Anything. What made great animation? Yeah. Well, no, because they just knew. It, they could just they could just anticipate what the problems were going to be, and uh, and approach them and uh, solve them without getting angry with each other, because they knew there was a, a, a you know, Sparky would come up with a, an impossible storyline, and then Bill would have to uh, make it work on film, and uh, you know, Lee would have to then you. Know, uh, get the musicians, everybody else to uh, interpret that and work on it. So, uh, but you know, they managed to do it most of the time. So. And well. You, you know, well, you, 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 you know, I don't know if you've ever saw the, uh, we did these uh, Saturday morning series, and Spark said, I can't write those. So we just took uh, the, the comic strips and stuck them together. Well, you can tell that, that Schultz had nothing to do with this. Because they just don't have the, the sparkle that uh, you know, his did, and I did some of them in uh, Europe. I did a whole bunch of them over there, and mine looked totally different than everybody else's. But because they're, they're little short things, some of them were like thirty seconds long, some were two minutes or three minutes, mm -hmm. and uh, see. So but you don't notice. You know, people suspend their disbelief. They watch these things, and they assume it's all the same, all done by the same people, and you know, they have no idea. So I had the you know, Frenchman animating Charlie Brown. And uh, you know. who watched the Christmas special when it was on in 1965? So yeah. that's that's what makes these so incredibly universal. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you want to read or uh, watch more, you can go on Art Insights or on CinemaSiren.com. And uh, we we love you who love animation. We and we love Charlie Brown Christmas special, yay 50th anniversary. And just remember to keep keep watching these cartoons because they really are. And we have to see that it's a it's a nightmare. Yes. Watch that. Okay. Yeah, if you can find it, I don't I don't think we've even done it on DVD. But uh, oh, well, I think we'll everything is out. somewhere. Yes. Uh, uh, everything is somewhere. Ask ABC or you know, Warner Brothers, whoever's <laughs> yeah. doing it. Hey, Thank you Warner so much. Brothers.